Everybody. All bankers hold this myth that great financial crises are rescued by war. So whether it was the, the Panic of 1857, followed by the Civil War, which bailed out the banking system. World War II bailed out the world from the Great Depression. So let's look at this next war. I mean, Iraq wasn't enough. Afghanistan's not enough. Yemen's not enough. Somalia's not enough. Pakistan's not enough. Uh, now we're in Uganda. That's apparently not enough. Revealed, Fox's best man and his ties to Iran's opposition. Now, Liam Fox, the defense secretary that stepped down, was forced to step down from Great Britain. His mistress, this guy Adam Warity, it turns out has been involved in an audacious plot to topple Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. So the self-styled advisor to Mr. Fox has visited Iran on several occasions and met Iranian opposition groups in Washington and London over the past few years. He is so highly regarded by Israeli intelligence service Mossad, who thought he was Mr. Fox's chief of staff, that he was able to arrange meetings at the highest levels of the Israeli government. So he's also connected to the neocons in America, who of course tried to overthrow Bill Clinton because he had a mistress. Yeah. Well, Monica Lewinsky wasn't going around the world trying to stoke wars with other nations. He's a war whore. <laughs> He's a war whore. And, uh, of course, uh, that's the song that they're singing now. Uh, let's uh, attack Iran. Um, this is the song that is getting all the war whores united on the same page. The Clintons, the Obamas, the Cheneys, the Halliburtons, the uh, Chuck Princes. You know, they're singing, let's all... Join together as war whores because we're not intelligent enough to get real jobs. <laughs> Let me explain something to you about war. You see, there's a huge debt bubble in the world, Stacey. And there's two choices. The, the debt bubble is, is cutting into purchasing power, essentially, is what it's doing. To everyone's fiat currency, their purchasing power is being eroded because to, to deal with the debt bubble, all these governments are printing money willy-nilly. Uh, and it's cutting into people's purchasing power. Well, it's driving costs higher, so it's kind of a uh, cost-pull form of inflation instead of a uh, demand push. But we'll get to that another time. The point being that prices are going higher for stuff like food and energy, and its purchasing power is eroding. Now, there's two ways that you can get rid of this problem, increasing purchasing power. Either you let the bonds collapse and therefore let the banks collapse, or you kill a lot of people uh, therefore eliminating demand for the fiat money that is causing the inflation. This is what war is great for. For example, the U.S., they killed a million Iraqis. That's a million less people that are going to have to be recipients of fiat money. Uh, U.S. bombs Iran. They kill a million Iranians. They, and they kill another 50,000, 60,000 Americans. They don't care. As long as they get rid of the uh, demand for fiat money, uh, that will help the top 1% not lose any purchasing power. So the humans become the fodder. So they have to decide whether they want to let the bonds crash or to kill millions of people and tens of thousands, a hundred thousands of American servicemen. And what is Obama thinking right now? Let's kill more American servicemen for the sake of recovery. The guy's a murdering thug. I mean, this is impeachable beyond impeachable. This is like tyrannical. Well, Britain is the leading edge of the financial war and the wars. They, they led the charge. We would not have gone into Iraq without Tony Blair. If he were not the one selling it, we would not have happened. If it weren't for Liam Fox and his mistress, then we would not be going into Iran. So, you know, that's, that's the truth there. And the other thing is, these Occupy Wall Streets will be shut down immediately if we do go to war against Iran, because that you, you're not allowed to dissent in a war. Well, remember uh, what stopped the uh, anti-globalization movement of the Seattle was uh, that Fakakta made up nonsense of 9-11. Okay, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Don't go away. Much more coming away, so stay right there.